So I guess we'll start with the obvious case in point, which is book publishing. And the theme of today's show is doing more with less. And I'm just wondering how you think this theme applies to book publishing today. It, it applies more and more to book publishing today. I mean, the word publish means to make public. And the purpose of book publishing is to take private utterances and make them public. And over time, publishers have experimented with every uh, means for for making utterances public. There have been times when, when publishers have been inclined to imitate uh, movie companies and, and television networks and buy the eyeballs of readers with advertising. I would say that as far, you know, th that today, uh, conventional advertising for books is dead. It's, you know, it's a, um, it's a business model that doesn't work for newspapers and it, and, and it doesn't work indirectly for book publishers either. And so publishers are obliged to find ways of reaching and attracting readers um, without advertising. For many years, that meant simply going to the conventional media and, and provoking interest in print or in television or in, or in radio. And that's still definitely a channel that we pursue. But the fact is that today, a lot of our readers are not listening to the radio or reading the newspaper or even, for that matter, watching television. Uh, and so we've been obliged to find other ways of attracting their attention uh, that are effective. It's evolving so much faster than any marketing space that I've ever, uh, you know, that I've ever participated in that it's breathtaking. It's truly astonishing the rate of innovation that's going on right now in marketing ideas. Yeah, well, later in the show, we're talking with Nancy Lublin, who shared a story about how she made this $20 video that got out to over a million viewers, I think, and became this giant national sensation. Do you think something like that would have been possible even a few years ago? Well, obviously not. Uh, it's all technologically enabled. And I'm just curious about what made you decide to buy Nancy's book, and if you feel like these books about sort of getting by with less resources are, are saturated in the marketplace, or if there need to be more of them. This book started out as an idea. So somebody told me, well, there's this extremely dynamic uh, woman who, who has run two successful nonprofits and is interested in writing a book about what the world of nonprofits can teach capitalists. And I thought that was a, a, an extremely presumptuous idea and was pretty skeptical about the whole thing. However, then I met Nancy, who is a very serious individual and truly a force of nature. In this universe where, uh, where there is a new idea every minute, she stands out as being an idea generator, which is not easy to do. This is an individual who has so many ideas, and many of them are good. And it was clear to me that just capturing some of her ideas on how to innovate and how to motivate people without using cash inducements could produce a book that would be useful that would be a natural for the nonprofit sector, but also be extraordinarily useful for the sector of the capitalist world that's, you know, cash poor, like startups. It's like a little rule book of innovation. It's just absolutely astonishing in that way. So needless to say, my first meeting with Nancy was transformative for me. I was convinced immediately that this is somebody who has a lot to say that's useful. The book is not exactly a nonprofit book. It, it's really a book about how nonprofits have been forced by circumstance to create change and to create uh, activity, economic activity, without any money. And so anybody who runs a successful na uh, nonprofit, which Nancy Loveland has run two of them, uh, has learned how to use incentives other than money to provoke performance, basically. And it's really a book on performance enhancement techniques for the economically challenged. And so for a startup or for any company that's really trying to spend less money uh, in order to develop, you know, powerful outcomes, it's actually a mind-bendingly innovative book. And when you read the book, it's like, wow, we can really do that. Huh. I hadn't thought of that. You know, it's kind of obvious, but now that you mention it, it's got that quality. We don't need the $2 million advertising budget. We don't. In fact, we shouldn't use the $2 million advertising budget. What happens when you use the $2 million advertising budget, basically, is that you tend to do the same thing over and over again. Whereas if you have no money, you, you tend to try new things that you've never tried before because, heck, what the hell, why not? Thanks, Adrian. You're welcome.